and we'll let you guys start. Take it away. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, cool. So uh, today we're going to be covering uh, Jupyter Notebooks and specifically how do you secure your Jupyter Notebooks for your end users? It's, it's a question that a lot of our um, customers have been asking us. Um, so we thought we'd, we'd put together a session, talk through some of the challenges, how Run AI uh, actually solves them, and then uh, actually go into a demo and show you that in action as well. Um, so my name's Steve Blow. I'm one of the solution engineers here at Run AI based in the UK. Um, so I'll do the first bit and then I'm going to hand over to my colleague Wes, um, who will do the demo. Wes, do you want to say hello? Yeah. Hey, everybody. Uh, Steve said I'm Wes. I'm based here on the East Coast of the US. Been with uh, Run AI for just about a year now, just under a year, actually, but uh, looking forward to presenting to you guys today. Cool. So let's let's uh, let's make a start. So we're going to first, as I say, look at the challenge. Um, talk about Run AI, how we're how we're solving these challenges. Um, Wes is then going to do the demo, and hopefully, we should have plenty of time at the end for any questions um, that may come up. So if we look at the challenge. When we're talking to our customers, some of the things that they struggle with, um, we see there's three key challenges here. Um, and the first one is around complexity, com complexity of deployment. And that's more from a, um, a, a researcher perspective in that, that they end up having to configure more of the infrastructure to get access to the Jupyter notebooks and things like that. So things like the connectivity, um, how, do, how do they configure all of the aspects related to that so that they can actually access the Jupyter Notebook. Storage is another big one. Um, so, you know, they've got lots of data sources that they probably need to utilize where their data sets sit, et cetera. How do they access those? And again, uh, um, there can often be some complexity around storage connectivity. Um, so those are some of the, the, the complexities from a data scientist perspective. And then obviously from a from an IT perspective, the complexities around that are really around how do you standardize what you're delivering? Because ultimately, the more you can standardize, the more secure you can make the environment because you get a bit more control from that standpoint. The next big one is resource utilization. Um, you know, if we look at Kubernetes, for example, out of the box, Kubernetes scheduler allows you to assign a single GPU um, or whole GPUs essentially to, to your jobs. Um, and that can be quite inflexible if you if you're running a Jupyter notebook uh, and you're developing a model. There's every chance you actually don't need an entire GPU, so you end up with uh, GPUs allocated to um, jobs where the GPU is in that 10% utilization or something like that. So again, a big big challenge is how how do you how do you get more out of your your expensive assets like your GPUs? And then lastly, you have the data security. Um, and again, this comes down to um, how uh, your, your jobs are run and how they're deployed. So when you're deploying on Kubernetes, you're obviously creating containers uh, and those containers run as a, a user. Uh, and the default for that is the root. And the challenge you then have is if you connect your data source in, you know, you've applied permissions to end users uh, on folders within that data source, et cetera. But if the user then has root access on the container, it means that they can actually overwrite the permissions and you've instantly got a security risk. So how do you manage that? How do you enforce that? And how do you ensure that that doesn't happen? And those are some of the things that we're going to be talking about today. So if we then look at Run AI. Um, Run AI sits on top of Kubernetes. Um, we have our own scheduler, um, among other things, um, which enables uh, increased utilization of your GPUs and things like that. Um, but the key thing we're doing here is, is we are uh, abstracting your hardware layer, things like your GPUs, et cetera, through Kubernetes um, and allowing you to therefore uh, um, apply resources much more efficiently. Um, but also from a security perspective, um, we take away a lot of the complexities within Kubernetes. So, for example, uh, some of the connectivity pieces that I mentioned, the data sources and things like that, we can automate a lot of those aspects. Um, and simplify that so that it's really easy for, for your data scientists to consume um, whatever it is they're doing. Uh, obviously, we're focusing on Jupyter Notebooks today. Um, and like I said, that consistency equals security, ultimately. So the first thing we have that solves the complexity challenge um, and 
this is again you know targeted uh, uh, to simplify that whole process of how do you go and uh, go and start your jobs how do you deploy Jupyter notebook etc but we have the concept of what we call workspaces um, and workspaces is made up of three assets um, environments uh, compute blocks and and uh, data sources and we'll talk through as we go so the first step is selecting your favorite tool so what tool do you want to deploy? Obviously, we're going to be talking about uh, Jupyter Notebook today, um, but actually we have integrations with a lot of the major tools that data scientists are using today. Um, and you can actually integrate with any other tools as well using our custom integration. Once you've selected this, um, and this is just defining things like the container image that we're going to deploy and any configuration that you need as a result of that, um, environment variables, et cetera. Um, you can then uh, uh, deploy uh, or choose the amount of resources that you're going to deploy for this container uh, or this environment. Um, so in this instance, you can see we've actually got a, a fraction of a GPU, and that's important. I'll talk about fractions of GPUs in a minute. Um, but the idea being this is a compute block that you can be predefined and you can select without having to have any complexity behind that. And then lastly, uh, you can choose which data sources do you want to connect and we'll automatically connect that through to the, the uh, job so that it's accessible within Jupyter Lab. Um, so, for example, that could be an NFS share, it could be an S3 bucket, could be pulling data from a, a GitHub repo, um, whatever it is that you're utilizing. We then uh, will, uh, once you've, you've selected those three components, go ahead and uh, initiate the job um, and you would then see this in the list. And as I said, a big part of what we're doing here, when you're selecting your environment, the environment defines what tools are in there. It also defines things like us passing through your UID and GID, by the way, which we'll show you in action in the demo. Um, but the key premise here is as soon as it's deployed, we will then actually provide you direct links through to the tools that you've just deployed. So that whole connectivity piece is taken away from your data scientists and instead it's easy for them to access. They can click on the link and it will take them straight through to the Jupyter notebook um, and they can start doing whatever they need from that perspective. So simplification is built into the product um, and that complexity is removed. The next challenge, obviously, that I mentioned was around resource constraints and, and how that's managed um, in, in that, you know, out of the box, Kubernetes allows you to do whole GPUs, not very efficient if you don't need a whole GPU. Run AI has a, a feature called fractional GPUs, where we allow you to actually slice up a GPU into much smaller chunks. And we can actually deliver those um, right down to uh, very small figures. So this is done in the memory lab. Um, the memory of the GPU, and we can actually do a slice all the way down to 100 megabytes in size. You probably never want something that small, but the, the flexibility is there. And if you think about this from a, a resource perspective, you know, prior to run AI, you've got to um, uh, apply an entire GPU. 10 Jupyter Notebooks, you need 10 GPUs. Suddenly with run AI, you can run 10 Jupyter Notebooks across a single GPU with our fractional GPU capability and no impact on performance to the to the end user because ultimately they only need 10 percent each for example in that scenario so very very powerful feature to to allow you to optimize utilization and then lastly um around the data security how do we manage this um, and this is all born out of our sso integration so we can integrate with your idp system so essentially what happens is a user um, logs into run ai we will then um, in turn request the auth from your IDP provider. The IDP provider will then send through the UID, GID, and any supplementary groups uh, that are relevant for that user back to us. Then when a user actually creates a job or work, workbook, so creates that um, uh, Jupyter notebook, um, what we're doing at that stage is we're obviously uh, creating that container but the key thing is when we're creating that container, it's going to run as that user using the UID, GID and the supplementary groups that we uh, um, that we have pulled from your IDP system. So when we're then connecting the data source through, the user will only be able to access the elements uh, within that storage that they have permissions for. Um, and so you end up with this unified system where when you're applying permissions to, to your data sources, 
they're automatically applied to, to the users when users are deploying Jupyter Notebooks, for example, and uh, connecting to those data sources. So that's the, the flow. Um, with that, I'm going to hand over to, um, uh, to uh, Wes to, to do a demo. And essentially, you're, you're going to see that integration um, with, with um, your SSO, the simplified deployment of, of Jupyter Notebooks through that workspaces workflow that I talked about. Um, and then ultimately us automatically enforcing those permissions on the data source. Um, and we'll also show you fractional GPUs for the fun of it within there as well. So you'll see those running in, in uh, uh, with smaller um, fractions of GPUs rather than an entire GPU. Um, so with that, I'm going to hand over to Wes for the demo. Over to you, Wes. Thanks, Steve. Really appreciate it. Uh... Go ahead and share my screen. Um, as I'm going through my demo, if you guys have any questions, please feel free to use the Q&A panel. Uh, enter those in there, and we'll either answer them afterwards, or uh, you know, Steve might answer them on the fly, depending on you know, depending on the question. So, as we log in, I'm logged in as an administrator to my Run AI environment, and I want to just show you uh, kind of the SSO setup. So. First thing that we need to do is we need to ensure that we are logging in with SSO. In this case, I've chosen to you, I've selected to use OIDC in order to connect to my identity provider. And in this case, my identity provider is uh, Active Directory and I'm using ADFS in order to integrate. Uh, we have some attributes mapping here so that we can get those attributes from the identity provider. So we're asking for the GID, we're asking for UID, any groups that uh, they might be a part of, and then the supplementary groups as well. As our users start to use the system, uh, they'll get populated here in the SSO users tab. So you can see I've got a couple of different users, this W Carroll at Run AI Local, that's me. But I also have Alice, Bob, Frank, and Jane. You'll notice they have no roles associated with them. And that's because we're going to leverage groups uh, in order to create those permissions. So you'll see we have a couple of different groups here. We have uh, LLM researchers, we have LIDAR researchers and camera researchers. And those are going to be mapped into the projects that we have within our Run AI environment. So you can see I've created three projects, camera, LIDAR and LLM. Uh, we've set their GPU quotas because I only have two GPUs. I need to share them across these environments. So LLM gets one GPU and then LiDAR and camera both get a half. But if we look at this, we can see that we're mapping the groups in here to this project. So this is how these users are going to get their permissions to access the resources that we have. We're going to go ahead and exit out of there. So after we've created the SSO integration and we're getting our users along with those GID, UIDs, supplementary groups and groups, we need to create a few things for our research or our researchers to consume. And the first thing we need to do is create an environment. And I've, I've already created an environment. So we'll just look at what I've created. And uh, we First, we have the ability to give it a scope. So who do we want to allow to use this environment? And we can do it at the you know, entire cluster level, at the department level, or at a project level. We're going to give this environment to everybody to use. Uh, we need to select the image. So which image are we going to use? And this is just a basic Jupyter uh, SciPy notebook. We're pulling it directly from the Jupyter repository, but this could be any image uh, that you've already created. We're going to select our tools, but the really most important piece here is that we are getting our IDP token to populate the UID, GID, and supplementary groups. So the users aren't having to provide this information. We are uh, just going to pull it from the IDP data that is passed into Run AI. Now that we have our environment, we need to set up a data source. And the data source uh, in our example is an NFS share. Um, we do support other data sources as Steve showed, including you know, direct host paths, S3 buckets and PVC. In this case, we're going to use NFS and we'll look at this again. Uh, once again, we have the scope, who gets access to this data source. 
And then uh, we need to just fill in some information. So I have an NFS share set up uh, at this IP address and the NFS path is NF, uh, mount NFS. So um, I'm setting up one share for these three different projects, but I only want each project to be able to access the data that they're allowed to. And we'll show you how that happens here in a second. And we're going to mount this at the container path uh, under this home directory. So now that I've created my data source and I've created my environment, I can go ahead and I can log in as a researcher. So we'll switch over here to Alice and Alice is one of my researchers. She hasn't logged in yet. And uh, when she logs in, she's greeted with this screen here. We'll click on continue with SSO. Had to refresh the page. We'll continue with SSO. And now Alice needs to log in. So this would be a normal user, uh, how they would normally log in. And once they've logged in, it will uh, you know, just query the SSO. And if we see that they've logged in recently and they have access, they would go ahead and be able to log in without having to provide their username and password every time. Oops. So now that I've logged in as Alice, I can see here, I've got a limited amount of information. So um, I only, I'm only able to see the project that I'm a part of, and she happens to be part of a uh, LIDAR. And we're going to go ahead and create a workspace. So in order to create a workspace, all we have to do is select new workspace. Um, her project is automatically selected because she only has one. We're going to start from scratch and we're going to call this Alice workspace. We'll click continue. And we need to select the, uh, the environment that she wants. And so this is going to be our secure SciPy notebook. And you'll see that we're pulling in this information. So you can see her user ID, her group ID, and her supplementary groups are already being pulled in from that identity provider. And we need to select uh, the compute resources that we're going to use. And we want to use a 10th of a GPU. And now we need to select data sources. So we're going to use this corporate NFS share and we will create that workspace. What Run AI is doing right now is we are spinning up this reusable workspace for Alice so that when she uh, you know, wants to come in and work, she can go ahead and use this workspace in order to perform you know, whatever tasks she may need to do against a GPU. So we are provisioning a 10th of a GPU for her in order to be able to uh, run her different workloads. So all she needs to do now that she has the Jupyter Notebook is come up here, select it, click connect, click Jupyter, and then we are going to go ahead and we are going to drop Alice into her Jupyter Notebook. And if we navigate into data, we will see that there is that LIDAR uh, folder there. And if we log into LIDAR, we see we have some other information, uh, a markdown file as well. She can come in here she can read the nice LIDAR poem that was created uh, for the LIDAR researchers, give them a little bit of, of confidence in what they're doing. Uh, if we come back here and we go ahead and we uh, go back to this, whoops, wrong button. We go back to the launcher, we click terminal. We'll show you a few things here. So uh, first thing that we wanna see is we wanna see her ID and I'll go ahead and increase this a little bit. And we can see that we passed in that UID, that GID in those groups. Um, we can also, take a look at uh, the NVIDIA SMI command. And we can see that these happen to be T4s and we are using uh, 1.5 gigs of the T4s. They have about 16 gigs of memory. So a 10th of that would be that 1.5 gigs. And we're, we're looking pretty good. But if we uh, go up a level here, so we're no longer looking at LiDAR, and we can do an ls lah and we can see that there are additional folders here that alice can't see and if we try to cd into llm uh it's permission denied because she doesn't have the rights in order to navigate into that file and read that file so this is how we are providing that secure access if we flip over to frank now frank's already logged in he's going to create a workspace just as we did earlier and Frank is uh, going to select the same notebook. You'll notice he has different values in here. 
and we're going to select the small fraction data sources. We're going to select the same data source. We're going to create that workspace, Oops, small fraction, create a workspace. And so that will uh, go ahead and spin up. Uh, you can see because we've already cached the image, it's right there uh, ready to go pretty quick. We don't need to sign out of Frank. So we click here, we click connect, and it drops us into our Jupyter notebook once again. Now, if we click on data, we click on uh, LLM, there is no LIDAR here because he doesn't have those permissions. He doesn't have those rights. So we click on LLM and we open up this one and we get a different poem for LLM researchers uh, so that they kind of understand what they're trying to do with LLM. So now that we have Frank, he only has access to uh, LLM. Alice only has access to um, LIDAR. What happens when we have a user who has access to more than one? Well, that happens to be our Jane user here. So we can actually see as Jane logs in, she can actually see these workspaces uh, ready to go. But she wants to create her own. And so she's going to create a new workspace, but Jane has access to two projects. So she needs to decide which project is she going to run under. She's going to run it under LLM. We'll start from scratch and we'll call this Jane Workspace and go ahead and click continue. We're going to select the same notebook and you'll notice here, she has a different UID, GID because everybody is different. We're going to use this small fraction. The data source uh, is the same and we'll go ahead and create that workspace. And because of RunAI's bin packing technology, we are only using one GPU to run these three notebooks. So all of these notebooks are sharing that one GPU, leaving any extra GPUs uh, open for jobs that might require you know, a, a larger percentage of a GPU or a whole GPU or multiple GPUs. So with Jane, we'll connect, we'll connect with Jupyter and drop us in here. And so now with Jane, because uh, she actually has access to more than one, she has that access to both LIDAR and LLM. And with Jane here, we'll go ahead and uh, open up LIDAR and open up a folder here and we'll just, make a directory called Jane, and then we'll touch uh, jane.py. And so we've created a, a couple of uh, things here and you can see they've, they've populated just like because this is shared storage. So it, it's gonna populate automatically. And if we go back to our other LiDAR user who was Alice, and we can see that this data has already populated. And so uh, we have this new folder and we are basing permissions on groups here. So uh, she has access to that Jane folder. She also has access to jane.py uh, and she can do something like import uh, OS and do OS, uh, OS and save that. And so now uh, if we skip back over to Jane, uh, and Jane opens up jane.py, we have that there. So this is how uh, data can be shared in between researchers, uh, in between group or within the same group so that they all have access to the most recent uh, data and information. And that's how we would accomplish providing a secure notebook as a service to individual researchers to ensure that they can only access the data that they're actually entitled to. And with that, uh, that's the end of the demo. Go ahead and hand it back over to Steve. Cool. Um, so as promised, I think we were just over 20 minutes. Um, but um, yeah, I think we've got one question, um, which was obviously we focused on Jupyter uh, notebooks today. Um, and the question was, is there any other tools that we, we, we support and, and can deliver the same capability for? Um, and so, yes, the answer is yes. Um, I don't know if you remember on one of my slides, this one here. Um, let me share my screen again. Uh, this, this slide here. Uh, you saw that we actually have support for multiple tools in here. So it's not just Jupyter Notebook that we could deliver that for, um, but we could actually deliver it for multiple other tools. And like I said as well, we, we have a, a custom integration where actually that, you know, the world's your oyster from that perspective. Um, 
so yeah um you know hopefully that's been useful giving you some insight um and if no one else has got any questions then we will um wrap it up cool okay gentlemen thank you very much uh thanks everyone uh who joined in uh a recording will be sent out uh to those here and the, those obviously who were not here as well uh and i will see you all on our next session thank you everyone